How many Baha'is are there in the world? Could you elaborate? Yeah, there's uh, almost, I believe, seven million, uh, if I'm not wrong. Uh, seven million, and also it's one of the fastest growings, also one of the widest spread religions. Um, and uh, actually, in fact, I know you're from India originally. We have a temple in India that I know you would know about. In New Delhi. Yes, that's right, in New it's Delhi. A beautiful temple. Yes, it's gorgeous, isn't it? It's, it's, uh, it's based on the lotus. That's right, the lotus design. Exactly. So the temples. See, now also in the Baha'i faith, we do have you know uh, several temples across the world in different continents spread out. But the praying and the meditating um, is done in the home, is done in the valley, is done in the meadow. And there's a, there's a prayer in the Baha'i faith that says, Blessed is the spot and the house and the place and the city and the heart and the mountain. Wherever the mention of God is made, that place is blessed and that place is holy. Uh, we do go and visit these temples and we do pray because they're very sacred. Um, however, at the same time, uh, everywhere is sacred, sacred to the Baha'is. Everywhere is special to the Baha'is and holy to the Baha'is. Yeah. Is there any special place you have in the home, in your own home, that you would have a temple like a Hindu family does, mm -hmm. a, a place of worship? You know, no, not, specific, not specifically, not, not culturally, culturally in that sense. Um, people do sometimes have prayer rooms where they fill it with prayers and um, keep it peaceful and reverent so that they can always retreat to that area to focus on God. Um, but at the same time, uh, Baha'u'llah says that the simplest things is just going to your own chamber, the privacy of your own chamber and speaking the words of God um, is what counts and is what works and what matters. Um, I pray sometimes when I'm in the car or I pray sometimes when I'm working or walking down the street. So there's no specific designated area. Do you, in your text, uh, does everybody have a sort of a text in the house, the, the principles of Paola? Sure. I mean, most Baha'is have the sacred text, the Kitab al-Aqdas, in their homes to refer to. Um, yeah, we always, and we have a lot of many other Baha'i texts. See, Baha'u'llah also re revealed other texts, um, the Book of Certitude, um, which was to guide the Muslims into understanding more about Baha'u'llah's dispensation. Actually, Baha'u'llah revealed that text before he declared that he was a manifestation of God. He revealed hidden words, um, prayers. Um, we're very blessed to have all of these things. Yeah, so many Baha'is have, have several of these texts in their homes. So do you have priests or pastors or what are they called your, mm. uh, who lead the temple, who lead in the temple? Uh, it's a good question. The Baha'i faith is very unique in the fact that it doesn't have a hierarchy or a bureaucracy. There is no any one individual, there is no scholar that comes in and guides the other individuals. Everyone is accountable for their own spiritual journey and the path and the communication between one individual is never through another individual, is straight through God. Um, that's why we don't have the confession of sins and, and such, as, um, such that you might find in Catholicism and other areas, other aspects of other religions. Um, but that every, again, reiterating what I had said before, that every individual has the capacity and the ability to know and to love their Creator and we assist each other as Baha'is in, in, in walking that spiritual path. But there is no clergy and there is no hierarchy. There are no leaders. There are administrative bodies. Now that's another question. The administrative bodies are there to guide different segments or different communities in geographical areas purely for the basis of uh, geographical reasons. Um, there is a structure in that sense, but none that one is higher than the other, or one is more able than the other, or that one should tell another individual what to do. We are all responsible for our own spiritual journey. So who is the one who would guide children? Like who would, who would teach them this text of Baha'u'llah? Would they do it themselves, or would the parents help them, or who would do this? Mm -hmm. First is the parents' obligation to guide their children. Um, we do have Baha'i classes where there is scripture learning, but 
because the Baha'i faith um, is so strong in the fact that we believe in all, all the religions and the different manifestations, um, the scripture learning is not just isolated to the Baha'i writings when these children go to Baha'i classes. These children are learning about um, Hindu writings. These children are learning about Buddhist writings. These children are learning about um, Islamic writings from all the religions. So they're taught from a very young age to be tolerant and to be accepting of the religions to understand them all as one. So again, to answer your question, it's the parents, of course, prime duty to guide their children. But of course, we as a Baha'i community always feel the obligation to take care of everyone's children, whether they be Baha'is or not, and to teach them of this message and this understanding of the oneness of religion, the oneness of God, and the oneness of humanity. So when you go to the Baha'i temple, mm -hmm. so everybody does their meditation on their own, or they read their prayers on their own, or somebody reads the prayer, prayers and everybody follows. Mm -hmm. Is that how it is done? Baha'i temple, um, now the Baha'i temple are just, um, there's no congregation of any sort. You know, when the individuals go to the temple, yes, they, they deepen or they spirit, uh, say their prayers or meditate. Um, sometimes there might be an activity of some sort, a choir might sing, or, but um, our holy place of visiting is not so much the temples, but it is the Holy Land in Israel on Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel has a holy significance for just about every religion, and Israel is a homeland um, and a holy spot for most, if not all, the religions. So our Baha'i world center and our sacred spot is where the shrine of the Bab and Baha'u'llah lay in Israel. And that's where every several years we make that pilgrimage trip to go and, and visit these holy spots. Uh, what is your role as a Baha'i and how would you, what is, how would you convert people? Convert. Um, I don't like to use convert people. I think the, the purpose of Baha'is the purpose of, of the Baha'is is to share the love and message of Baha'u'llah to people um, and to show that light and to show that truth. Our job is to plant the seed. It is never to force or convert or tell people that they must change. In fact, the people that become Baha'is don't ever feel that they're converting because whatever religion they were before, is that, that religion still maintains because the Baha'i faith embraces all of these. So there never is a changing and throwing away of the past and abandoning and then uh, bringing on something new. So that's why I never like to use the word converting. But as far as my role as a Baha'i, I know that I have several, several duties. And one is to serve humanity. I think the main principle is to serve humanity in any way possible either in the areas of child and you know, children development or in uh, the economic realm or in world affairs and international affairs and human rights. And um, I must serve humanity in whatever craft that I, that I take on and that I master. Um, next is to, to inform people of, of the message of Baha'u'llah. I feel that if I hold it to myself, then I have a jewel or I have a treasure that I'm keeping to myself and that I'm not sharing with other people. Is there a one-liner you would put forth and uh, explain the Baha'i faith? Hmm. I wish. <laughs> I think how I would describe the Baha'i faith and from my eyes would be that it is a peaceful religion that understands the unity of all mankind and its purpose and its vision is to serve humanity by using the blessing, blessed teachings of Baha'u'llah and integrating it into our lives. Thank you very much, Nava. Thank you. I enjoyed learning about the Baha'i Me too, thank and you. I hope all the viewers would also enjoy this uh, interfaith. Thank you.